So a little while ago, a week or a couple weeks, I don't know, <clears throat> like I said, you you know me in time. Uh, Dominique sent me a video on this um, young lady who was talking about fixing the energy grid on the planet. So I went and listened to what she said. I was just excited because she used the terms energy grid, really. <clears throat> so I looked at a little bit of her stuff and uh, and uh, reached out, commented on her, her video and moved on. And uh, then somebody else reached out to her and I guess she said to them that they weren't vibrating high enough to interact with where she what she was doing something to that effect which piqued my curiosity so I went back to her side and Dominique said that there are quite a few or several uh, young people that are doing this in Canada and basically what she was talking about that she was going to sacred sites and healing the sacred sites or working on correcting the grid on these sacred sites so and she was also talking about that they were interdimensional I think what she was talking about was less desirable entities that were sneaking on the planet and part of what she was doing was blocking them from getting on the planet because they weren't supposed to be here um, and so I looked a little bit deeper into that and what I found was, interestingly enough, that this energy grid work has been going on for a long time. It's just uh, like many things, I just didn't know about it. But when I looked back through all of the stuff and all of these people who were working with the energy grid, it was very peripheral. It was very on the surface, maybe a little bit on either side of, of surface energy grid, but nothing about what like what I'm talking about, that everything is connected and the energy grid that was that's on the planet, of course, goes all the way in, all the way out, interdimensionally to infinity, um, up, down, in, out. How do you explain that sort of thing? And what she was doing was very peripheral and it seemed to be that all of the people that had been talking about it from this level, anyway, all of them that I could find on the internet we're still dealing with that same area on the planet, that one part of the grid, which is a very small part of the grid. So that led me to more curiosity because I thought, well, if she's working on that energy grid, how can she not see the rest of it or talk about the rest of it? And that led me to um, her talking about these sites and I let that led me to what she was doing and what actually she's doing is she's correcting or um, Supporting or I don't know the word use uh, uh, These stargates now anytime you hear anybody talking about stargates or machines that will uh, teleportation or spaceships any of that kind of stuff that's all 4d entities all of them so she's working with the energy grid to correct these 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 stargates to make them accessible to some and not accessible to others now from my perspective on going to 5d this is really good news because the more ways that the 4D entities can get on and off this planet, the more options that the the humans will be given, the people will be given on which way to go, what to choose in the fourth dimension. So that means I'm getting closer to 5D. So that's really good news. But I wanted to do a quick video and tell you guys that the Stargate system is very definitely fourth dimensional system. That that in 5d of course you don't need any of that you don't need stargates you don't need spaceships uh you do all of it yourself uh, it's a big 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 difference which is a part of the you know being god and the creationary process of how powerful you are at your creation cre creationary process and that is a part of it that you don't need a stargate to get from here to there and uh, so i just wanted to let you know as we start to get into these other entities that now that you are pretty much in fourth dimension although you do just like i do like last night i had a dip into the third dimensional uh, vibrations you still are living in the fourth dimension so since you're 
100%, well, we'll say 99% living in the fourth dimension and moving through to the fifth dimension, um, I'll start getting into entities that you might be running across. Now, all of these fourth dimensional entities aren't necessarily going to look like little green men or um, snake-headed people or, or, or. There's a lot of them that will look very, very human. That unless you know uh, what to look for, you would assume that they were human. Uh, very much so. But the ultimately, and I'll go ahead and share a lot of that information on what they'll look like and what you can expect to see and what you'll come across and what the attitude is. We'll be going into all of that. But the, for the most part, it all boils down to one thing, and that is your instincts. Your instincts will absolutely tell you whether or not, you know, what kind of entity this is. Now, as I've said before, the fifth dimensional beings are not going to lower themselves into the fourth dimension to reach you and bring you up to the fifth dimension, okay? They're not going to do that. They won't do that. They will telepathically assist you. They will um, assist you through your pub friends and your pub friends talking to you telepathically because they're, they've got a tighter connection, so you might hear or feel them stronger. So they, these other entities or beings will help you in that regard. But the fifth dimensional beings are not going to show up in physical form in the, fifth, in the fourth dimension and talk to you. They certainly can come in visions or uh, daydreams or night dreams. They certainly can talk to you in those along those lines, but they will not be in the fourth dimension because they would have to lower their vibrations too much and they're not going to do that. So a lot, most, if not all, of these beings that you're going to run into that just... It doesn't, there's something in the back of your mind that says this, this person isn't human. And by human, I mean have been on this planet, um, def human defined as we defined human, okay? And you are, if you get that feeling, if you get that instinct, you are probably 99% of the ch time, you're going to be accurate. That that is not a human that you've just interacted with or seen or, 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 or. You also, as you raise up in vi vibrations, you're, you're going to look back through people you have been hanging around with for a long time and get that feeling. And again, you will be right. There are 4D entities that have lived here for a very long time that look like a regular human. Then there are a lot of these fourth dimensional beings that have lived on the planet that, um, well, you, do you ever see those pictures on, on YouTube where they'll find a picture of somebody in 1940s and then another picture in 2010 and they look exactly the same? Well, that's those beings. There are some fourth dimensional beings that operate without outside of time space. They don't operate within those rules so they can appear to not age. Just like we appear to age. They appear to not age. Does that make sense? So as you go through life and you raise your vibrations, you're going to remember people that you have had interactions with. You're going to identify the ones that you are getting ready to uh, interact with. And you'll identify the ones that you that are in your life now. And you'll be surprised at how many there are. But remember, those are fourth dimensional beings. They are not beings that are fifth dimensional beings. They're not going to... Um, get you to 5D. So again, just like the third dimensional beings, you're going to interact with them, send them joy and love, and not get caught up in their games. There are still plenty of low vibrations on the fourth in the fourth dimension that will keep you here. So remember, let them have their games. Because now you've got not only uh, billions of humans, long-term humans, that are on this planet that are wanting to play this dualistic game, but you are now in a, in a place of fourth dimension where there are multiverse upon multiverse where they are playing the dualistic game 
and they certainly do not want to be messed with or interrupted any more than the third dimensional dualistic players did when you tried to interfere with them. So keep that in mind. Like I said, the fourth dimension, still dualistic, still has uh, a lot of low vibrations, not as deep, not as deadly, not as dark as the lower 3D vibrations, but you still have lower vibrations in the fourth dimension. And they do work with them. They do uh, play the game with them. And you don't want to be drawn into all of that scenario. So basically, in this video, you're going to start seeing more and more fourth dimensional beings. You'll become aware of the fifth dimensional beings more and more. Uh, but the only way that you'll actually be able to interact with those guys are if you raise your vibration and touch into 5D, which you certainly can. You probably cannot sustain it for any length of time, but a split second in 5D is extremely noticeable. You can tell the difference uh, as long as you're being very, uh, what's the word they use all the time? Very ordered, very deliberate, very deliberate in the way that you live and how on top of how you're feeling, and what's going on around you. As long as you're deliberate about it, those moments of split seconds when you are in 5D, you will notice them. You will know that you've been there and you will know that you've been there, done that. And uh, it also will help. Be sure to notice it. Say something about it. Thank your pub friends, your higher self, Gaia. Hey, guys. Sorry about that. Um. As long as you've got all that, as long as you're being deliberate, you will be able to notice it. You will be able to notice it. All right, so that's what this one's about. Being aware of identifying 4D entities, beings, and being able to begin to be aware of the fifth, fifth dimensional beings and how to get to them. All right, and nobody needs stargates that's in 5D. No stargates needed. So, yeah, the, the energy work that the, it looks like a lot of the energy workers are using are just definitely very peripheral. You all in your sleep, all you starseeds, have done uh, a lot of grid work, but it's on a way different level than what um, these guys are talking about. Not that yours is better or worse. Nobody's better or worse than anybody. It's just a different game, a different level. And certainly it's good for us. We want as many beings coming in and off of this planet as possible to give more options and uh, get everybody off to where they're supposed to be faster. Move us to 5D faster.